Greetings. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and the cruel man. For thou art my hope, O oh Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee I have been holden up by the, from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels, and praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. My prayer for America, Psalm uh, 71, 4 through, uh, 4 through 8. And... Uh, when you finally get an upload from me, uh, it looks like there could be like a six-hour file. I'm not talking for six hours, but that's just how much material. Then the last one was more of a personal nature. My just going back over the over kind of the, the the man's enslavement of man from a spiritual perspective and from the perspective of. Um, almost a global tradition, um, even as we look at it anthropologically, we go back to initiation rites in primitive societies of, of say, um, girls and boys. There's a certain servitude that, that occurs, almost like an apprenticeship, along with scare tactics and, you know, things that sometimes result in death of turning men and women into, I mean, boys and girls into men and women, uh, as per the tribe, as per the definition of that tribe. They may be right, they may be wrong. Uh, you may agree with it or not. But the one thing that's clear in all this, and then the elders have their say, and then the, you know, there's kind of an order amongst people that they follow, a structure, if you will. And if one doesn't conform in primitive society, they are put out either be alone wandering the woods or killed. And that's just been because basically, in my opinion, uh, this is because in these primitive or, if you will, pre-civilizational societies, you know, these little tribes and, and going by their instincts and how to conduct themselves, um, which many... Uh, long to go back to. Uh, the religious rites and the various rites can be quite cruel. For example, um, destroying a woman's genitals, for example. Uh, forcing boys into homosexual uh, activities in the name of initiation or becoming men that, you know, remain and, you know, sort of a under the radar, pedophilia kind of thing. I won't, I won't say, I'm sorry, I won't say homosexual. Let me just put it this way. Let me say it. Um, forced uh, sexual servitude of uh, preteens and so forth in, in, uh, and, and acceptable amongst the tribe. Uh, and, and no, I mean, there's, if that's all you're going to do, is be a slave to the primitive society. Do what you're told. Conform. And then and just be like the others. And be in this tribal mode. Well, then that's fine. Then, then I guess you would say that society, being that... You know, I have news for some of these professors. We are no different than them. I see no difference between primitive society and modern society at all. I see it being the same thing. In other words, where man is, he's going to create the same, oh, more elaborate and more technological, but basically the same rituals, the same initiation rites, the same, you know, the mavericks are put out or killed and the, uh, uh, the conforming uh, slothful are raised up in positions of power that they do not deserve. And hence the corruption of society, the corruption of these primitive societies that all went extinct due to their own corruption. 
this idea of looking back on the pure primitive societies of, uh, and then, you know, there's some that they're kind of incomprehensible, like if you take New Guinea and cannibalism and hunting the ones of other tribes. Oh, we do that. But the point I'm trying to make is that, um, you know, we would look at that and, and say, oh, well, that's obviously not the pure old society. That's some sort of aberration. And I'm here to tell you, headhunting is not an aberration. It's what's done today by modern society. What are you talking about? You know, in a sense, uh, the whole Bin Laden thing, which was a joke because he'd been dead for, I don't know, it was published by Fox News in 2001, I think, he passed away due to some sort of kidney failure. And there was a funeral, and people attended the funeral, and it was... And then now we have people being killed because Navy SEALs are going to come forward and tell the story of how that wasn't really Bin Laden. And, and therefore the helicopters are going down and all kinds of stuff is happening. Burial at sea, nobody sees the face, no one sees the body. Um, nice work if you can get it. It just means the American people are the stupidest people on earth. The absolute dumbest of the dumb and uh, not to be considered um, worthy of freedom because, see, for freedom, you need the mavericks. For freedom, you need the individuals. For freedom, you need the visionaries, those willing to think outside the box. For freedom, you need people willing to fight and die for the cause of freedom and go up against a tyrannical government. Um, we don't need men turning into women being cowed by the uh, women of the household, becoming these metrosexual panty waist idiots, as we see across the board in our society. And I can just tell you that this society is rife to fall, and so far I have no evidence that it won't. And yes, I said what I said. There's a complete, and you know, and I look on TV, and ironically, there's nothing but testosterone commercials for low T, well, this whole low T thing, in my opinion, is partially done on purpose by people that are behind the GMO foods and everything else to kind of, and the environment and environmental pollution, to try to make men the, these docile uh, creatures that, um, and, and uh, anyway, this is not anything new. This was done in Greek society and it fell, it was done in Roman society and it fell. There's a certain structure that has to be there. And it was also attempted in primitive societies, and whenever they were succumbed to the, to the witchcraft queens of the, of the circles of shame, whether primitive or modern, both being equal, hello. There's no difference between New Guinea and, and California. No difference between African uh, primitive religion, which I studied, by the way, and sympathetic magic, and Hollywood. I see no difference between the, the, I see a difference in poverty, but in terms of vendetta, in terms of the way of the spear, in terms of the way of hunting, the, suspecting the other one of another tribe, or putting those out who don't conform, which they desperately need for innovation so the society does not become in a rut. So the primitive, uh, and I say that with quotes around it, so the quote, primitive unquote, um, tribe doesn't go extinct. They need innovators, but that's frowned upon, especially when the, uh, the feminine principle takes hold and gets out of balance with the male principle or the feminine uh, way versus the male way, or there's a lack of balance between the two. I'll just put it that way. Uh, because the, the feminine way is, you know, would be, say, Adolf Hitler in the extreme. In other words, the occult, witchcraft, totalitarianism, and that's out of whack. The male way, too, if it gets out of balance, is also totalitarianism and uh, global warfare. Uh, sort of like Dick Cheney would be a good example of that. <laughs> there are individuals who are good examples. Um, but we don't have a balance here. We had a balance. What we have now is, is men becoming women, um, and in order not to be dissed, the 
males who are ma men are being made into villains. The, the men who become women are being applauded. And the gay meme, which is a meme, by the way, gay is another one of the most stupid people that I, I have ever, as a, as a political body, no, not as individuals. I know a lot of gay people and, and have a lot of gay friends and, and, uh, and have had through the years since youth. And, um, well, the individuals who were good people that I knew, um, guess what? Their communities put them where? Out, because they wouldn't what? Conform. Same thing. I don't want to even get into it, though, but... It, but it's in our face with the, with the court ruling and all that, which I told a friend, I just said, you know, I can't believe we're, I can't believe we're dealing with this and seriously with a straight face saying, oh, we're having this issue and then having people be all politically correct and then have them do look like what people did to black people, start worshiping gay people like they did black people so they won't be called prejudiced, meaning stupidity on all sides. So I can't just single out. I'm just saying the, the political body of gays is, is um, being used. Someone said to me the other day, well, there was a gay couple and they died. One guy died and the other one had to pay $300,000 and change uh, for an inheritance tax. If they were married, he wouldn't have to, if they were legally married, they would, the, the, the money would have passed on to the spouse and, uh, just like in regular hetero relationships. I'm like, you've got to be, this has nothing to do with gay marriage, this has nothing to do with anything. This has to do, what you're telling me has to do with the tax code. The tax code is unfair. Then I said something radical, I said, if I were to do it again, I would not get married with the state in any regard. With Trish, we would have our ceremony before God, take our vows before God, and that would be the end of it. As far as the benefits are concerned, I don't want them. Yeah, but you could have a house and, you know, if one of you dies, then you have to pay this tax. And it's like, well, you know, you got to live with your conscience. But it, the, the, the issue there is the tax code, not the marriage code. Anyway, my thoughts about it are, uh, you know, if we keep focusing on these sort of domestic issues like abortion, gay marriage and things like that, I mean, to where it becomes a national obsession and then the men keep becoming women, which then there's this sort of uh, LBGT sort of cover over that saying, see, that's, that's really, they're just being themselves and they're afraid to come out of the closet. And it's like, no, you're not seeing, sociologically speaking, that would be nice for you political people, but that's not what's happening. What's happening is a conquering of the people by the, it's the same thing that happened in Rome and the same thing that happened in everywhere. It's a conquering of the people. It's an imbalance, it's a totalitarian vibe um, of political correctness that becomes so intolerable that people can't even pee without having to take some form or else be considered a pariah. Uh, but yes, like men and women's bathrooms have to be, there needs to be urinals in the women's bathroom. And so men can be up there at the urinals, and then I'm sure you're going to have women try to get an angle and sort of hit the, yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's no end to it. No end to the folly, the narcissism, the stupidity of our society. There's no end to it. If, when it falls, two things. One, I'm not part of it. And probably you're not part of it, because I'm speaking out. And the idea that this kind of talk would actually be risky is also another joke. Ha, 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 ha! I laugh at that. You have to be the uttermost unbelievable pussy in the world to think something like, this is a risk. You've got, you're already gone. You're already willing to, uh, you know, you love your servitude. You can't wait to obey your next orders. You can't wait to, to follow the rules because it's going to lead you to nirvana. Following the rules around here will lead you 
to complete degradation, the complete wasting of your life, and the most utter failure of all, the fact that you never knew who you were. You were only knew who you were as per the orders you were given to obey. And that's the only way you ever defined yourself. You never really looked inside. You never really took the journey alone. You never really risked it all. You never really risked um, being, um, guess what's the word I'm looking for? Being cut from the herd, being uh, ostracized in some way due to being an individual. You kept looking around, making sure you played the political game, the PC game perfectly so that you could get ahead. And what happened is you got behind because you never knew where's the where's your soul I'm not the only one talking about this stuff I mean I'm, I'm certainly not the only one who's noticing it I've you know I, I can't watch politics anymore because I feel so sorry for the um, all the people involved for the people cheering on one side or the other, for the politicians themselves, just really marionettes, for the, uh, the issues putting forth, which is basically the satanic agenda, which is, and which is, what, what is the satanic agenda? The satanic agenda ends in, it's the end of human. And that was always it. Yes, Mr. Sir Mick, since you're out on tour, good for you. Jolly good. Uh, but here's the thing. As I've said a million times about your song, uh, the nature of Lucifer's game does not puzzle me because I'm rooted in the word of God. So I know exactly what it is from day one. It doesn't begin and end with man bowing down to your circle of shame. You know, in other words, your honcho and your social circle, whatever. You bow down and become their slave, as we talked about last time. In fact, I'm going to try to tie all these podcasts here so you have like six, a six-hour file. I wonder if I can even do that. The age-old slavery. If you succumb to the slavery, you are not an overcomer. You're not an individual, and um, you are what you are. You're basically just there, and even though you live in an apartment or whatever, you are the same as living in the same dungeon in Egypt that Joseph lived in before he rose to power. He wouldn't conform to anybody or kiss anybody's ass, especially not Pharaoh's wife, who came around, and then, then she was scorned, and he paid a price, but he held his integrity. And so he was moved to where? Number one under Pharaoh to manage the, um, the kingdom of Egypt. Why? Because Pharaoh wouldn't trust anyone else but someone that had showed that kind of integrity. Plain and simple, period. Joseph in Pharaoh's court. It's a famous story. Look it up. He was the consummate individual. He would not bow down to Pharaoh's wife. It wasn't just having sex with her. It was that Jezebel wants her slaves. And you know, if you bow down and let her have your testicles, men, then she might give you a wife or riches down the road, but she owns those. This is an age-old uh, thing that humanity is ashamed of. I say, why? We're getting everything else out of the closet. Why not bring this out? And of course... Um, well, the greatest story about the, the, uh, the women who rule the world and always have are the witches, I should say, and mainly comprised of females, is this movie called The Mists of Avalon. I've told you that a hundred times, but I'm going to go back to that. If you want to see the actual sociological and anthropological structure of humanity, the way it's been from the legendary King Arthur's court through the Magna Carta, through the Declaration of Independence... There's always been this thing happening in the background, right? In the Catholic Church, it was the goddess Isis disguised as Mary, sneaking in via the sisterhood, which means the men were enslaved. Right? 
And it's funny. The women seem to all really want that man who is not a slave to Jezebel. Oh, you could say slave to the system, go to work every day, do what you're told, whatever. But it's the same structural thing. It's still, there's Jezebel there in the background. She's there in the background. Somebody. And um, that abrogates the role of father. That abrogates the role of husband. Uh, This other marriage is actually the satanic one, which is the slavery. This is the all-important marriage. The marriage of the beast. And this is what has enslaved humanity. And we're talking now, because it enslaves the women, the men, and the children. It doesn't just enslave the man. What people are screaming about nowadays, this shift kind of more to an overt acceptance of this kind of reality, which these, I don't even know if I can call them politicians or men. I don't even know what you would call someone like Bill Clinton or Obama. They're not men in a, in a normal sense of the word. They're, they're owned and operated by others. And they're just like used car salesmen, I guess, you know, to be kind. But ultimately, they're, they're lost. And, um, and I've studied both of them. And I could, you could add Bush to that. and Not so much Jimmy Carter, but... Ronald Reagan was like a half compromised in the sense that he was sort of owned and operated by Lou Wasserman, who himself was owned and operated by Jezebel. So it's, it's this ongoing thing, ongoing slavery. To be aware and cognizant of it and to speak ill of it, as I'm doing right now, puts yours truly at risk for being ostracized, not by the powers that be, but by the people who are slaves who don't want a ripple in their servitude, which obviously includes their children, because you have to give your children over to this. If you're a slave, you have to indoctrinate them into it when they're just reaching puberty at the latest. For the, for the highborn and the elites, it's, it's actually at age four and five years old. And that's a sexual indoctrination. So what do you think about that? And the reason there's no Geraldo show busting it is because it's global, involves billions, so it disappears. So there's nothing to talk about. But I can tell you one thing. If you don't find a way out of that, then your life is as if it never was. then your God is your belly. You know, your God is your loins. You're, you're, all you are is eating, drinking, fornicating, I don't know what else, amusing yourself with bread and circus and then dying without purpose. Jezebel would like to make sure that man never has a purpose to fight for. Talked to a brother the other day, just said he wanted to do a film and a, a, a DVD and a, and a CD project based on uh, somebody he knows and um, that uh, is a tribute kind of thing. And, and he, he, he didn't want to do it for money. He wanted to do it because it was something that just should be done because... Uh, the person's deserving of a good reputation and all that. And I'm not going to go into who it is or anything like that. I'm just going to say, or who's involved, I'm just going to say that, see, that's a real manly, that, see, that's what I'm talking about. That, that's someone taking a risk, going out there and saying, this should be done because I believe it should be done. I'm passionate about it. This person deserves a break. I, I don't want any money for it. I just, it's something I just have to do because, see, that's the male. That's, the, that's an intact male. There, that's a person right there that's not a slave who will go out and do something to accomplish something because it should be done. Because it should be done. Not because there's a money motive or anything else, but you know, you fight for freedom because that should be done. Because man is nothing without freedom, 
Without freedom, man as a slave doesn't exist. He doesn't have a life. The only way man emancipates to become wise is if he is free. And, that, and she as well, he and she. That sort of precludes the stupid debate about, you know, um, the whole endless social debates about the gays and the abortions and this and that and, and, the, and the, the environmentalism and I mean, whatever else Adolf wants to do. And then, you people that were used for political purposes, then you get thrown under the bus because you see this administration is all sidled up with the Muslims who kill people like gays and people like Christians and, you know, and uh, so that's, uh, there's this whole double, there's, it's just such a con. But you people want to be slaves of the system, of the shit stem, of Babylon, of Jezebel, of black magic, of powers and principalities, of darkness and slavery. You see, a good power, a power from God, only wants you to be free and to pursue your bliss, whatever that is. Jesus said, don't care for your own lives. In other words, you're going to have to put your lives at risk. The greatest thing a man can do is lay his life down for his friends. Yes, absolutely. Because if you're not willing to do that, then you're easily enslaved. Because you, want to, you don't want to die, so you're going to just go ahead and do what you're told, hoping that one day you'll... And that one day will never come. And then therefore, um, just as I saw in a movie World War Z, which I went to, they had huge pillars of bodies and they would burn them. No one know who they were or what. They're just a huge pillar of human bodies, which I suppose the oligarchs want us to get used to seeing giant pillars of bodies being burned in the open square because that's what they intend to bring you. So if you remain slaves, you will one day experience the funeral pyres of huge piled up bodies and, and, and bulldozing them into graves and everything else. You will see that. You'll keep your mouth shut because you don't want it to happen to you. And the next thing you know, they'll be coming for you. Because, see, this thing feeds on itself. Eventually, everyone's politically incorrect. It's the satanic plot, which is to destroy humanity. That's the whole point of it, is to destroy humanity. Not equality. Not marriage equality. Not income equality. Not... <laughs> no way. It's death equality, getting rid of human. Then, from another angle, we have the trans-human um, genetics, the, the, the Ray Kurzweil school of thought, which is to become completely owned and operated uh, as a machine. And the singularity, which is the merging of the um, uh, AI consciousness, artificial intelligence with human intelligence, to become super intelligence, and that is the end of humanity. Because once man becomes a machine, no soul, that man is dead. The machine has nothing to do with what was that man. The, the man is dead, and now there's a machine, kind of like an avatar of that man that used to live. And this desire of folly and idiocy beyond, I mean, to the point of com uh, comedy, Ray Kurzweil is the ultimate comedian. He's working for Lucifer to destroy humanity and he thinks he's improving it. Uh, this is the ultimate folly. This guy is the, the ultimate um, retard because he will never, he, Ray Kurzweil, will never experience the singularity ever because there is no such thing. Period. Furthermore, eternity as a machine in this, this reality we're in is arbitrary anyway. It's only held together by the will of God, and it, he wills something else. Well, then all these little doctors and scientists are SOL. So that's the truth of what's going on. You know, uh, we have no rock stars waking up. We have no uh, sports figures waking up. We have, you know, we have, we have a few, but very little. When they do wake up, what happens? That's right. If they were feeding at Satan's trough for their... And, and, and I've got 
people that they defend like an Ozzy Osbourne. They go, oh, he's... I'm like, but, but he's not yet conscious. What about that? Do you think he'll ever wake up? How dare you say that? I'm just basing it on lyrics, things he says, interviews, you know, the public figure. Maybe there's another figure there that's afraid to come forward. But until that happens, what am I to conclude? You know, or I don't know, you, you know, are there, are there conscious people in positions of power like celebrities that would risk their careers and come forward and say, this is wrong? Well, if there are, and I, I, don't, I don't believe there are, I believe that people are, that, that, in other words, I don't believe they will make a difference. Because I believe that the, the addiction to money and power is too big, so they will keep their private thoughts to themselves, knowing everything I've just said, but not wanting to stick their neck out until somebody else does, which probably won't happen either. And if nothing happens, you can count on this civilization collapsing very soon. And to you communists and uh, progressives, you will never get your utopia. You will never get the second Atlantis, you Freemason. You will never get the new world order. You will not get anything. It's just like the singularity. It's a folly. It will never happen. I promise you it will never happen. Oh, you may have a brief three and a half years of something that you think is on the way to it, but no, it'll never happen. But we want to be like Star Trek. Everyone sort of a metrosexually conformed into this sort of uh, unisex sort of thing with this, this oligarch machine in the background, back home somewhere, giving orders. <laughs> the primitive societies mainly became extinct, not because of modern civilization crushing the men, but because of internal corruption and the use of black magic and witchcraft and the taking over of that same Jezebel spirit that did them in that made them susceptible to attack from the outside. Same thing happened with Native American societies. Not all of them, but, you know, and not all the primitive... Not, not you, I'm not... Look, I'm not painting anything with a broad brush here. Pretty broad, but, I mean, that's not including all people and all things. You can always find exceptions and, and whatnot. I'm just saying, look, what I'm seeing is the collapse of this civilization because of the people who are cowards and stupid, beyond belief, actually, beyond belief. If they think that sucking up to the man and, and licking the boots is going to put food on their table or protect their children, they just have not read history. And I suppose that is why they have such lousy teachers in schools today to make sure that people don't learn their history. Or if they do read it, they, don't, they get a different interpretation so they don't know what it means. Memes. The white man from Europe destroyed the peaceful, loving, awesome Indians. Meme. Um, well, that's all I got in education. It was like you'd read history and then you then get, yes, the male is the white male is the, is the devil in the world and needs to be eliminated. This is the meme today. This is like the Barack Obama meme. And the white males are not... Maybe they're the last to know that they're, they're, they're targeted, and they're targeted also by Hollywood in the sense that you see lots of these stories about the evil male, but the courageous woman with her children who stabs and kills her husband, the evil husband who's a white male, and then she goes on courageously into the future as a New World Order biatch because she's slayed the evil dragon, the white male. And, you know, it could also then be the black male and it can be the purple male or whatever kind of, you know what I mean? It's basically it's going to be the male, whatever it is. The thing they don't want is testosterone. I believe that given the chance to become a utopia, most of you... Um, if you're young, 
they would they when when it comes down to it, there would basically be uh, enforced castration of all males, except those deemed worthy of breeding. That would be like almost like a rite of passage. Oh, you got him snipped off. You now, we will now give you a job in the in the slave camp, pushing a button all day. There you go. There's your reward for stepping up. And oh, well, if you don't get rid of your testicles of your own free will, I suppose they could just, you know, have it as a like circumcision. They just do it when you're right. And then the ones deemed worthy. I mean, that's where it goes. All those sci-fi novels, all those dystopian novels, all that literature predicting a future such as that. Machines run the world, evil oligarchs, strange women. Interesting how in the, in the film Oblivion with Tom Cruise, the, the voice was a woman. It was a, the oligarch, the voice of the machine is a woman. And that's just it, to, so, so to be in that society. And then when, when it opens, you see Tom Cruise as a sort of metrosexual type of guy who then transforms to a freedom-loving hero as he finds out what's really going on and who he really is. Oblivion, highly recommended. Uh, the critics hated it. it. It's an A movie. And the critics slammed it, not because of the, any flaw in the movie, because they just don't, because they, the critics, are slaves. They serve Jezebel, and their testicles are belong to her, so they can't say anything because, you know, they're cowards. They're owned and operated. So have I pissed off enough people today? And, you know, I, I've, I've gotten, you know, some mail... Where people would say, you know, you just, you know, you're just ranting and raving, lording it over people. I'm like, no, I'm susceptible to all the same crap. I'm just saying it for us all, including myself, to be careful out there. I know, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone does. So I know you know the importance of being free. Bring a fee, a, being a free thinker. Being, and I'm going to demonstrate that through my performance art, music, and all kinds of different things that I will bring to bear. But the bottom line is, those who enjoy their servitude, as Aldous Huxley was uh, so proud of, he thought the Brits enjoyed being slaves. He said they enjoy their servitude. Or rather, they love their servitude. I see most people out there, especially on the whole immigrant issue, these are people they want to bring in here because they're already used to that. So they love their servitude. They vote for Obama because he's going to give them things, i.e. servitude. They love to be taken care of by the government, i.e. they love their servitude. Now me, my views are more libertarian because socially I'm not really... Oh, yes, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I've been ostracized or excommunicated or I've been cast out of the Christian church. Uh, evangelical, Catholic, you name it, I've been thrown out of it. I'm excommunicated as a heretic and a derelict. Uh, absolutely, because I would not give my balls to the Jezebel who ran the place. I, I, I No, like anyone else, I... You know, with all the things that uh, they, they dangle, all, all kinds of trinkets in front of you to join up. And then, and, then, and then if you don't, then they come at you with all kinds of this horrible spiritual attacks and, and, and witchcraft and everything else. They bring the whole brunt of it down in your head. You know, and it's like, well, who's involved in this? The whole world? Oh, the world of man as a slave. Oh, well, how wonderful. And how's that working out for you, man? All these political bait, debates are basically distractions, aren't they? Man? Man! Man! Throw yourself in the garbage can! How's that feel? 
because I just want you to see how they feel about you. The Lord doesn't feel about you like that. He loves you. You're unique. You're awesome. You're amazing, as he is amazing. And he wants to take you and make you into that person. But, oh, yes, I know. There's only one slight problem. One very slight problem. You have to have a little courage. And that is why the church gave in. Because the people don't usually generally want to display courage. You know, they want an easier path. They don't want it to be mano a mano everywhere they go. I find that I get in arguments with people right and left because I don't want to give up my mind. You know? Whatever they are. And now I kind of like don't want to deal with the political thing because it's too predictable and I've already predicted prophetically what's going to happen. So, you know, why, why watch the slow death? You know, there is no life after it, by the way. There is no utopia. So I just want you to understand that this goes to a forever war, pain and suffering for humanity, but humanity wants it because they love their servitude, so this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get. It's coming right down to brass tacks. It's not really what you believe anymore. It's not really, you know, it's this slavery that we've talked about from the very beginning that seems to now have been confused with the rite of passage to adulthood, which is, oh my God, how could we have ever looked down our nose at primitive societies after, after look at what we are? So it's like, okay, I've been through all the rites of passages, through trauma, through being raped, through being forced into some sort of servitude, and I just, I got so disgusted with all that, with seeing uh, trusted elders descend to that of just porno. And all this, you know, society thing going on. And yet just beasts who are never filled, who prey upon children, who, no, well, no, 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 that's, no, don't understand me. When I say that, I mean, I'm talking about the norm. I'm not talking about something exotic. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the, the, Civilization here. I mean, anyone who's a slave is aware of that. And then, you know, but see, they, they use all that, sex and trauma, to get you to break and be on their side. Their side being weak, sniveling cowards who are just good for nothing. Right? Because you didn't have, because they didn't have the courage to speak out. Because when their kid was being buggered and abused, they didn't stand up for the kid. That makes you a pretty disgusting individual. But, those are the people of high society. What are you going to do? It's not what David Icke says. David Icke about the lizards over here, lizards over there. It's, it's the whole thing. What are you talking about? It is, it is what it is. Growing up to me was presented to me that you must accept this reality and accept your servitude and then you're an adult. I'm like, really? That's what makes you an adult? And accept your position then try to work your way up. Oh, by doing the same thing that was done to me? Exactly. What would that make you, and what does that make me? Good for nothing. And how are we being a benefit to our children? Yeah, but you don't want the children to suffer, you know, being aimless and purposeless and feeling alienated and like they don't belong and having a hard time out there and being rejected and, you know, sometimes falling to drugs and alcohol and just being derelict. You don't want that to happen to your kid, do you? This is better this way. 
anyway, so this is the milieu, the area, the fulcrum by which all the shows of the, I've heard some shows, like I said, of, of Alex Jones lately, it seems to be, you know, really trying to hit on some of the stuff. I just want to jump ahead, no offense to him, and just put it all in context so he understands, well, he may never understand, but so to, to broaden the context so that we understand that it's not like, see, in his mythos, there was this great world before of heroes and whatnot, and, uh, and now it's descended. In, in a sense, he's right. There were more individuals, more people willing to put their lives on the line, pledge their, their, their lives and their fortunes to the cause of liberty. Absolutely, amen. I will never go against that. Without that sacrifice, it would have never been the freedoms you and I enjoy, which are going fast because, you know, and the testosterone out the window too. While they're selling more tea on t television, I, it's ironic, it's amazing. Right? Only in Satan's kingdom could this, all, all this stuff, I, I always marvel at the menagerie of it, of, of the intricacy of it, of the high technology of it all. Because you're just basically on a game board in a technological world that you think is real, but it's not. It's, it's, it's a fabricated situation. Not by some architect called Lucifer, but it's, um, well, you know what, well, uh, yeah, there's some truth to that too, but uh, that's why the Masons have their architectural thing, because that represents Lucifer. That's their God. And that God leads humanity to self-destruction every time it's tried. I'm getting off the point. I'm trying to put it all into context because he, he, Alex Jones, which has millions of listeners, so I talk about him because he's the most successful and has the most influence. And he spends a lot of time talking about how men are becoming women in the households. How, and it's like, no, they, this was a long time ago. If you look at the movie East of Eden with James Dean, and the guy that played Mr. Magoo, I forget what his name was now, but, uh, oh gosh, you know, I'm sorry, that's just getting older here. Uh, but if you look at that movie, you will see the very same thing. Eventually the husband ends up wearing the apron and submits to the, becomes pathetic to where his son is trying to get something from his dad and can't because the guy is just wimped out. The dad can't be a good role model, a good man, because he's been put under slavery of Jezebel, which isn't the wife necessarily, but it's the system. The system, and, you know, and so when you look at East of Eden, they're not talking about this family unit that's unique. They're talking about the system that broke the father that now is going to break the son. Going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, East of Eden. In other words, they're talking about, in that movie... The, the human condition, like I told you about Bridge on the River Kwai, another must see. Well, so is East of Eden for that very reason. It, we're talking about civilization. This is not the first generation that's experienced this situation, but it will be the last. And I, I will tell you what's going to happen, being that, you know, your quote, desert prophet guy. I put that in quotes. I'm not labeling myself that, so don't get all excited. It's just a euphemism. It's just a, a caricature. I'll just put it this way. I predict that, the, that, that humanity will not wake up, but that a remnant of people will that God wills them to, that they've been chosen for that before they were born. Because we all existed before we were born. Uh, when I've said that before, it got me booted out of churches for having that kind of thought, but it's true, so I'm just going to keep saying it, no matter what the idiot church decides to do. You don't want to come against brethren. Oh, brethren? You, you mean in Christians? Since when? Are we brethren? I belong to Jesus. I can't speak for the rest of them that, that claim that. 
Maybe they do, maybe they don't. How, do I, how would I know? I'll find out after this life's over, though. And I forgive. I, you know, I understand it. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to hold a grudge against the whole thing. I'm just, yes, it's sad in a way, but it's not sad because God is very successful. He gets everything done that he wants to get done. So why even talk about it? And then that's why I'm in, but I keep talking about it, singing about it, doing music about it. And now that I'm, I realize that you people don't want music about this topic, about the lizards, about the slavery, about the, the totalitarian. I mean, now that I realize that you really, you really just want to keep doing nostalgia and putting your YouTube of nostalgia up and you're just stuck in that, in that rut and you refuse to get out of it, I'm like, huh, oh, why should I even bother with this? You know, to be an individual doesn't mean making a big display of your individuality either. Being, a, being free doesn't mean you have to go out and flaunt this. It just, it's really in the mind and the soul and the spirit, isn't it? You can be in a prison cell and be free. And you can have a million dollars and be running around the world uh, and be a slave. Now, what I'm talking about has nothing to do... I mean, there are outward manifestations, you know. But, see, what I would draw Alex Jones' attention to would be East of Eden. So what he's talking about, where the men are becoming women in the household and the male who, who has any cojones at all is hated and vilified and all that, there's nothing new here. This is what happened in France about the time of the revolution uh, from Louis XIV to Louis XVI, Louis XVI, just before we had the uh, secular enlightenment. This is the same thing that um, we've been dealing with the same thing in all these different times. And what they think is, well, with these changes we're making, we're going to have a renaissance of creativity, a renaissance of art. A renaissance, I'm like, no, um, art only really thrives when there's, there's a tremendous oppression. If everyone goes along with the uh, servitude, then there is no servitude. That's the other thing. Society is generally happy. Um, so that's why we have in our arts nostalgia, because we long for those days where there was somebody that was real, rather than produced by television. Now, the Lord God is real, Yahweh, maker of heaven and earth and all things. He's the maker. And this thing with Lucifer and all that, that's just between them mainly, but it's uh, part of it. It's part of another process. Uh, having humans overcome this is a test. The only way to overcome is in Christ, who is also God, who is um, paid a price so that you could actually find a way out of this situation in the spirit. Now, that being said, I don't know anybody who's with the whole thing or against it, you know, uh, who... And, and, you know, the war is disgusting. I mean, you know, you have the Obama administration going after, quote, white patriots, kill them all type of mentality and throwing the IRS on them and all that. It's, it's, it makes him look like an absolute idiot in the, in the context of things and um, makes the, the patriot community that's trying to act like they're defending against the tyranny not seeing the big picture, you know, not understanding this is all just folly. You know, no, no, well, they'll take your kids, that's real. It's like, yeah, yeah that's, yes, it's real when they take your kids, but I'm just saying it's the repeat you know, it's, it's the same thing. I, fighting for freedom is not an external thing. It begins interiorly, and it manifests itself outwardly in a, in a physical manifestations of the spirit, like a free society. But it only, uh, if you just go out, okay, what, pick up a gun and go out against a thing? You just go out like that, like you're going to fight them, like the Wolverines in, um, in Red Dawn. Uh, you'll, you'll be killed, but the, the worst thing is, is you won't know why you lived. Because the freedom starts in, in
in here inside it's it's um being mindful of these things that can happen and look all of us are in danger of being sucked into this slavery at all times we need the lord even doing this podcast here it's like a way to fight back against it to realize that we're all like almost on the borderline you know, and um, there's a lot of people on the other side of that border that would love to pull you across it. But what do you care what they think anyway? The, the, the thing you're doing, it's not against them. They're irrelevant. What's relevant is that you overcome this situation. It's between you and your maker. It's between me and my maker. It's not between me and you. It's not between me and you who disagree with me or you have... Some th- oh, love to, you know, anytime you want to debate, anywhere, anytime. Uh, on this issue of slavery, uh, the spiritual slavery that existed uh, before civilization began, that's always been kind of a balance of a give and take. And when it gets too much imbalance the wrong way, then the civilization falls. You want to talk about that? Or the comparison between primitive society and modern society, how they're equal, how there is no difference. Hello. Or anything. Those of you who really believe we're headed in the right direction by giving up our souls to this machine, which is what it literally is, which is your death, because the singularity will never exist. The utopia will never exist. The new Atlantis will never exist. All that exists is a grave and the will to self-destruct or all commit suicide and jump into it together. Let's not fear the reaper. Don't fear the reaper. I always wondered what that song was all about. I was thinking it was a guy and a girl committing suicide, but I don't know. Maybe it's some... Who knows what they had in mind. I, it was always a creepy song to me, though. You know, I liked it. Blue Oyster called, I liked it, but it was just creepy. And, you know, I'm reminded of it because there is no new music. All there really is is, is that, and then there's some leftover from the 90s that are out there still, but basically it's Nostalgia City. Because civilization, from a creative standpoint, has already ended. We're in, you know, not post-America, post-civilization, which is what they want because they believe that that will lead to a new dawn of a new civilization, the new world order, the thousand points of light. It will lead uh, to, to a kind of an order for a while, yeah, but a short while. And then after that, um, it will be total chaos from which man will not uh, recover. God will recover, and he will recover his own, and there will be beings, but these beings are to be emancipated. Emancipated means brought into an eternal framework which there is no death. That's not the singularity. And there's multiple dimensions, including those which have no sun, moon, and stars, which is really more to reality, closer to the actual source of creation than this. In other words, this can be set aside, see? So if you really want to be eternal in this, it's like being eternal in a box of Cracker Jacks, in the little toy in there. That's that's your equivalent of wanting to be eternal. That that puts you like, gee, I'd like to be alive in that box of Cracker Jacks in the toy there. Say it's a little little box they give you with a jack-in-the-box that comes out of it or something. You, uh, You want to put yourself in the box of Cracker Jacks in that little toy Okay, and that's the singularity. It's, it's inside the box of Cracker Jacks. That's where you want to live for eternity. That makes Ray Kurzweil a genius. And believe me, I've read all his, you know, his main things, and I'm, I'm just amazed that I, I can't see how a guy that's so smart can be so dumb, but I mean, I'm absolutely amazed. I don't, you know, what he ought to do is just, well, never mind. I don't want to get my personal animus in this or frustration. I've, I really just want to detach from humanity because the car wreck, I can't stop the car wreck, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to get bad. And there's going to be mass death. 
and mass sorrow. Oh, the sorrow that's coming. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's going to be crying for the rest of their lives. All the people that cheered it on and all the people who resisted it and are the same in the end. All crying and dying. And the oligarchs behind the scenes will be lapping it up. They'll be playing tennis and badminton and bowling and traveling around to the stars and they'll be just having a great old time feeding off your trauma. Just like the ultimate dystopian novels, you know, where they have to rebel against the evil oligarchs to have freedom. In the Hunger Games, don't expect that because in that dystopian novel, what happens is that, that there's a need to fight back and be free, but the author and the, and the people in Hollywood won't let that happen because it's important that the, that the, uh, the balls are cut. There isn't that need for freedom, in other words. There's, so it's going to be a muted, kind of misguided, kind of uh, meandering kind of story. It's never going to bring the full focus of what you want, which is those people that are put out there to kill each other unite to overthrow the evil society. That's what you want to see, but they're not going to give it to you, people. They're not going to give it to you. They're going to give you some sort of compromise. So I guess I do these podcasts because I'm, otherwise me, myself, I would probably collapse into laughter and, and tears at the same time. I don't want to let it get me down, you know. I mean, I, I have to buck up here. i got to be more courageous, you know. And let me say another thing. Everybody wants to be a slave to the extent that they want to be taken care of. They want the comfort of being stroked. They want the comfort of being nurtured. They want the comfort of being held and approved of by their peers. And that's all on the table if you would just submit. Yeah. Then why do so many of them become drunks and wind up dying horrible deaths and, and with Alzheimer's and all the other diseases? Why, do, why, does, why is it so sad when they get old if it was so great? Because they wake up and find out it was a lie. And then, like my grandfather, he was in sorrow the rest of his life. I watched him for 40 years in sorrow. You know, he was a big mucky muck and he wound up just being in sorrow. And, and during those years of decline, nobody called him and nobody was stroking him and nobody was, you know, everything he had enslaved himself for. Everything he had, you know, given it all for turned against, it turned out to be false. Not turned against him personally, but I mean, because it happens to everybody. Yeah, but what you're talking about is you'd have to rebuild the whole society to have a society of individuals is, is a society of chaos. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. A society of chaos. I'm simply saying to trust God for our society and not people. With that, I bid you shalom, shalom. And that's the end of this transmission for now. Deal with it as you will. Freedom is spiritual, it's internal. Most of us are always in danger of weakening and becoming slaves to the system, and many of us are, and we come out, we go back. It's a, it's a dynamic kind of thing. I'm here to tell you, though, that at the end of the day, any going back or becoming part of it for everybody, including the honchos and controllers and Jezebels and whatever, the, you know, the people who are, think they're running the show, it's, it, everyone goes down in the end. Everyone loses. Everybody loses.